If you like somebody who's early, Jordan's a couple minutes early, and he'll like to say a couple things, and we'll go to questions. Uh, thank y'all for making it. Uh, I know it's raining outside, but I appreciate y'all having me, and it's a real big honor to be here. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Red Coat Band. Shout out to the Red Coat Band. And uh, Georgia EQ, they asked me to do that. So shout out to the equipment staff, best staff in the country. So with that being said, um, let's open it up. OK, we're going to go to your left on the second row. As a Charlotte guy, how fired up are you for game one back home against the top five team on national TV at night? Definitely exciting. You know, it's a big buzz around the city. You know, I go home uh, for the past couple of weeks. And, um, you know, it's really exciting. You know, the team is really excited, fired up. And it's even a more intense feeling when you're from Charlotte. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot on your shoulders. You have a lot to prove. You want to show the city what you can do. And, you know, the product, I'm a product of the city, so I rep it hard. So, you know, I just want to make sure I do my best out there. We'll go to your right on the fourth row. Jordan, what was the biggest factor in coming back for this season? Easy decision, like I tell everybody. But the biggest factor was, uh, was just the team. You know, um, I didn't want to leave the team so soon. I felt like I had a lot more on the table. And, um, you know, I told somebody earlier, like I called Devontae Wyatt. And I was like, Devontae, we doing this? And he was like, yeah, we're going to do it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it then. And, you know, at that point, like it was literally like this. And I was like, you know what, I'm coming back. We're going to stay on your right, third row. Uh, kind of Garrett, Saturday down south. Um, you make that decision to, to come back, and I think it surprised a lot of people. But at the same time, what did you kind of make, make your, your main focus to be able to say, this is why I need to be able to improve for, for the next level? Um, definitely pass rush emphasis. I feel like I'm a good run stopper. You know, there's always room to get better. And, you know, in the SEC, you got great competition. I like to call it the NFLU. So um, definitely want to get as much more experience and much more technique before I head off into the next level. But, you know, what's for me is for me, and that can wait. I just want to enjoy the time I have now at Georgia. Stay on the right, front row. How excited are you um, going into 2021, hopefully being more of a normal season, playing in front of full stadiums, you know, just the, the fan experience again, as opposed to last year when you, know, you didn't have as much of that? Definitely. Um, that makes a huge difference in the games. And, uh, you know, I, I wish for the freshmen last year to experience that full capacity stadium because they never got that opportunity yet. So um, I think that'll be a great experience for them. It's definitely going to be a great experience for me. I have fun you know, making the fans happy and playing to the crowd. So it's, it's just one of those things, you know, that, that really ties in that football aspect that makes football football. To your left here, third row. Going into a big game, you always want to be as prepared as you can possibly be. Game one is against Clemson. Darian Kendrick, defensive back who transferred to Georgia, spent three years at Clemson. Do you talk with him at all to kind of get an assessment of what talent is on that side of the ball that you're going to be going up against? Not really. Um, my assessment is coming from film. You know, we watch film like any other team. Um, but the thing about DK, we just want to make sure he has a smooth transition. And, you know, obviously he's a vet, so, you know, he knows what to do. And it feels like DK been here for a year and some change now because, you know, he's so well acclimated to the culture. And uh, it's just really exciting to have him. And Taiki, you know, obviously he's a great player too. So it's great to have them both in this team. We're going to go to your right, third row. I know that everybody's going to say that they just value wins above everything else, but you're not necessarily a guy that racks up the traditional stats, and you know that playing that position in the spots that you're in, you're not going to necessarily be that guy. What sort of things, whether that's team or individual, numbers-wise, do you do value, and do you say that this is what can indicate that I had a, a good performance on a given day? Um, honestly, the gray sheet at the end of the games, we get that on Sunday. And that will tell me how well I did in the game, technique-wise. But, you know, either way it falls, I just want to do what I can to make sure the team wins. As long as we have one more point than the opponent, then, you know, I feel like I did my job. And I'm more, more so considered about the linebackers. I want to make sure the linebackers have a good game, because at the end of the day, that's my job to make sure that they're free. To your left over here, second row. Uh, Jordan, what was your first impression, or, or over time, your impression of, of JT? Um, he, he didn't play much, as you know, 
And then uh, how did he take it? And then what happened from the state game on with him? Well, we always knew JT was going to be a good player. He was just injured at the time. And, you know, you just had to be patient with stuff like that. You know, you can't really rush him into things. But when it was his time, he came and he showed up. So that's one thing that we're grateful for. And I'm grateful to have JT back on this team because, you know, as I did, he could have left too. So um, it's just real good to have him and have him spearhead that offense because the offense looks amazing right now. So I'm just really excited. I'm going to go to you right here in the second row. Hey, with the um, Peach Bowl, the second half is really when the defense came together. How much momentum do you take from that second half of the game into the defense for this season? Um, you know, we can't really uh, bring momentum into this season. You know, we, it's a different team. We have different players. You know, we have to work around what we got. But um, definitely it was fun. It was great experience in the Peach Bowl. I was really glad that we were able to rally and get the, the win. And, you know, it's just – it feels good, you know, when you when you have people around you that that can pull together and pull off a win like that. Going back to your left, second row. I think it was 2017. Your high school went to go play Zamir's high school. Yeah, uh, over there. What what do you remember that about that game? You were playing tackle, right? <laughs> and uh, would it have been different? Yeah, y'all won, but would it have been would he have had fewer than 300? I think he had 300 something yards on yeah. 13 touches. Would you have had uh, a rougher day with you in the middle there that night? I'm just reliving the experience. <laughs> uh, that game was really hard. Um, as much as I wanted to play on defense, I had to play offensive tackle. But I always joke with Zamir, I'm like, look, if I was on defense, you wouldn't have got that many yards. But um, I. I was like, man, I'm glad he only got 13 touches because he would have got more. It would have been, it would have probably been a different story. But you know, there's a good team. Scotland County got much love for them, and uh, me and Zamir, you know, we always talk about who got a better team. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, Mallet Creek in that year, you know, we were the better team. So we have Jordan for a couple more minutes. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to stay here on the left, second row. We'll stick with that first game theme. When you have a game of that magnitude to start out, does that change the attention to detail and the focus in camp when you get there in August? Do, do you look at it any differently when you know you got to come out of the gate ready to go? Honestly, no. Uh, we want to treat every game the same. You know, no game is bigger than others. You know, no matter if we play Clemson or UAB or Georgia Tech, you know, we want to treat it as the same. And um, you know, the level of preparation is not going to change for anybody. So. I uh, just want to make sure that we're prepared for any team, you know, nonetheless that we play Clemson on the first game, which is really exciting. But, um, you know, it's still like, you know, it's just we want to go one and oh. So level of preparation is not going to drop off from any team. I have time for two questions. We'll go to the back here and then we'll finish up on the left. Yeah, um, don't know about personal goals you have for this year, but you are on some watch lists. One, one is Benaric. Um That means that people have noticed you and will be watching you nationally but also means that everybody's offense is going to give themselves to you. How do you feel about that? Being on the watch list is cool. And as you say, you know, I'm going to be on everybody's radar, but that's what I kind of want. Because if they're on me, then somebody's free. So, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I do the best I can, you know, regardless. And, um, you know, it's a cool experience, but that stuff doesn't really matter to me. You know, I just want to be the best player I can be for the team, you know. If I have a team accolade that says, like, Jordan did his job, that, that means more than any other award I can receive outside of it. Final question here on your left, second row. I know we're talking a lot about Clemson, and you haven't even been able to step on the football field yet with your team in practice, but can a, a game like Clemson set the tone for this season? I know you're 1-0, but there's so much hype around this game with how talented both these teams are and the tests it will be for you guys. So. A, can it set the tone for the, the season? And, and how do you block out that noise going into the game? Um, one thing that I did for blocking out the noise, I deleted social media. Um, I only got back on just for the media day week. So um, just want to make sure that I stay grounded, not get too high, get too low. Um, you know, it's a lot of buzz. But at the end of the day, football is a game. Got to play it. And that's how I approach. That's how I approach things during the season. I approach it as you know, it's a game. We got to win, and doesn't matter who we play. But 
you know, I guess, you know, Clemson and Georgia, they have this narrative that, you know, we're two powerhouses. One, you know, is make or break, but it's not really make or break for us. You know, we, you know, we just go out there and play our game. That's the main important thing that we want to do. Jordan, thank you very much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much.